We're about to blast the straw in here. Get embedded up nicely. It's very windy. We'll see where it lands. May as well have cattle shed scraped out while we got the muck trailer here. Hi everyone, it's Jack here at Main Skills. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching the video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, tell everyone about it, ring the little bell, you know the full works. So what we are on with is as you can see, we're in the sheep shed. You saw us get them all in, fetch them inside. I'm just gonna show you what we actually do with the sheep while they're in here, they're not lambing yet. So just a bit of the morning routine and uh, show you what's occurring. As you can see them in here, I'll flick you around. So you see here, we've got a mixture of all sorts in here. So we're predominantly Texels, Texels here. Uh, there's a couple of mules in here, the odd ones scattered around. And then there was them Chiviot mules, which, I'll be one there. And then Begret Big Ears. There was some of them Chiviot mules that we got as well. So there's a mixture of all sorts this year, just to see how different stuff does, how the lambs come out, how they look, and uh, see what occurs. What we've also got in here, is Uncle Kev's cow. So we've got the Highland cow in here. You can see there's just a ball of fluff down there. That is actually the calf. So we fetched that here at the beginning of summer. You've seen it around the shop, grazing in the fields. We fetched it inside now. Although it will be grand outside this cow, it won't it won't bother one bit. It's got a thick coat on it. The med for being out on the top of hills. Um, we don't want it out there because it's just going to chew the field up and make a mess. So that is why we fetched her in. So we've just fed the ewe rolls in here. So we feed them the ewe rolls, which is a nut. I'll be able to show you that um, on my video there. I've just took a feeding them. So we've got a ewe nuts that we fed to them. We've just done that, gone round the shed, fed them all that. Um, so they get them. So we give them three bags in the morning, two bags on a night. So the reason we feed them morning and night is because if we just feed them once a day, if you feed them then, uh, you give them, they get that energy, they get a boost, and they're a full 24 hours before they get a bit more of a boost off that energy. And uh, it means the sugar levels are going up, down, up, down. Whereas if you feed them twice a day, morning and night, it just makes sure that that level, sugar level, keeps stays up, it doesn't drop, and then hopefully we don't get any twin lamb. Because twin lamb, not twin lambs, which is what we want, two, two lambs in a sheep, which the majority of these have that don't have any dots. That one there's got triplets though, it's got red on it. But any that don't have dots are twins. But what we don't want is twin lamb disease. So what that is, is just a severe lack in energy. And um, they can soon get it sheep. If they go down, they get, they get a lack of energy. They go down, they start shaking a little bit and um, you have to treat them for it. So um, you give them a bit of calcium, you can give them propylene glycol just to try and boost them, get them back going again. But the problem is once they go down, they're hard to get going again. Some will jump straight back up, but some will stay down and they'll not want to get up. And unfortunately, sometimes it can lose your lambs and then after that, they can become fatal and they can die. So you really need to avoid that. So that's why we feed them twice a day. We also have, they have hay in here. Hay, 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 there we go. So they have hay feeders in here, plenty of that all the time to get at. We're gonna bed them up in a minute. So we've got the straw chopper here with two bales in. We're going to blast them in here in a minute, so I'll show you that. We wanted to feed them first thing this morning, let them find all the feed in here because we just feed them on the floor. Problem is, if we bed them up straight away, we'd just bury all that food and they never find it. So that's what's going on in here. Now, if we come out here, we'll shut this door a minute because we don't want the sheep to escape. So we'll shut that. Right, I'll flick you around again. We have some lick buckets. So you just see them there, they're from Philip Holden's up the road, some Max Energy ones. So um, we have them in here, they're full of molasses, minerals, and the sheep chew at them, lick at them, and uh, it just helps them keep a bit of energy because molasses in there is just literally sugar, and then um, the minerals as well, just to keep them right. Now here comes Matthew, and what he's got, he has got some of the fodder beat he saw us lifting. So here it is, he's got some fodder beat in there, and what we do is every morning, we fill these troughs up along here, all the way along here. So we used to use this for cattle years ago when I was little, and we used to feed them bags of barley out here. But anyway, we fill this with fodder beet for the sheep, fill it all up, and uh, they go mad for it. So we'll get it filled up, and then we'll show you what happens when they come out. Right. Here we are, so this is the fodder beet here. So you saw us lifting this the other day out the field. So like I said, you've got all different sizes. Bigger ones, smaller ones, tiny ones, it's a mixture of all sorts. So we're filling the drops up like that, you can see there Matthew. We're just 
filling them up, let the sheep out in a minute. Let's see if you like the fodder beat or not. Come in, Matthew. Let's see if they all come running out now. Let's watch out. There we go. So you can see they go mad for the fodder beat. They come straight into it. They love it. See, they soon chew it up and get a grip into it. There you go, you can see the white bit underneath, that's what they're into. Grand stuff. You can see there, so you can see there, Matthew's getting a piece in his hand. You see it's white and pink there, pink swirls in it. And it literally does look like a piece of a sweet piece of candy. There we go. And there's Polly. I don't know if any of you remember Polly. Polly is the one pulled Dorset sheep we seem to have. She came in a batch of, te batch of Texels once, so I don't know what the crack was, whether she was an adopted lamb or something, but anyway, she seems grand, and uh, she normally is the first ewe to lamb as well. We'll see what happens. I don't know if she's bagging up yet or not, but normally she does lamb first, or somewhere near the beginning. Good, good. So while we're on, we may as well have cattle shed scraped out while we've got the muck trailer here. We scrape the front out where they stand to eat and keep the back bedded up nicely. You can see, you saw a video of these ones coming here, I think. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But anyway, these are the ones in the car park shed at Mainskill. They're doing well, some nice sorts in here. All heifers. 
and uh, just from a farm up the road. Good, good.